Steve Cohen, who's all over Twitter and sends out a tweet that he's going to have a big press conference and tell it like it is. So what do you think is going through his mind? And did you take anything from Billy Epler's comments, essentially backing Buck Showalter and sounding like they're just going to keep chugging along? They're not blowing this up yet. Well, New York is a different media market, as we all know. And there has been a lot of heat of late because the Mets have underperformed to an extreme extent. People are asking questions in the media. Fans are asking questions, wondering, is anyone going to pay the price for all this? Because in baseball, as we know, that often happens. Billy Epler yesterday sought to kind of calm the flames a little bit, and he did. He basically said, we're not going to fire anybody. Buck Showalter is the guy we believe should lead us out of this. The coaches are working hard. We believe in them as well. That, to me, was the prelude to the Cohen news conference today, and I expect Cohen to basically express frustration and express his willingness to get the team to a better place at the deadline, but I don't expect him to come out and say, Buck Showalter is fired after his general manager yesterday said nothing like that is going to happen. So it's going to be a case where he takes questions, and that's great, by the way. How many owners do not get out front and take responsibility and accountability for their club? But at the same time, I'm not expecting anything seismic out of that news conference. What would be something seismic? What would be something that you would say, wow, I am so impressed that Cohen, hey, he just, he's, he's on the, he's on the podium. That's a huge thing, which I think all owners should have a mandatory two appearances per season, but hey, whatever, that's never going to happen. What would be seismic? What would be a seismic thing from Steve Cohen that everyone goes, whoa, and it, I don't know whether it propels the Mets or not is irrelevant. A seismic thing would be threatening a job or firing somebody. That's the obvious thing that would be most seismic. The other seismic thing that's been talked about with the Mets, more theoretically than anything, almost like the conversation we were having with the Cardinals about my article and all of that, is the idea of the Mets as sellers. I don't see that happening but perhaps Cohen could shed some light on his thought process because they made an interesting trade over the weekend. They traded Eduardo Escobar. Not such a big deal, right? Brett Beatty's usurped his playing time. They have other guys as well. But what they did was picked up his entire remaining salary, and they did that to get a prospect. In theory, because Cohen's got all this crazy amount of money, he could do that as well with some of his higher price players pick up their salaries, get better prospects, and kind of retool that way. Do I expect it to happen? Is it easy to make happen? No, in both cases, but that would be seismic if he admitted that he's looking at selling in that fashion. No, you know what would be seismic, Ken? He fires Billy Epler after the press conference he had. That would be seismic, and that would be such a a pimp move. Be like, oh, yeah, Billy, by the way, what you said, it don't matter. You're out. Now on to a That would be seismic. That would be no, awesome. You're correct. Hey, that would be the Steinbrenner move. Oh, you want to be the Steinbrenner in New York? Yeah. You just put your but fist down and point, say, Scott. screw it. He's taken pains so far in his public comments to Joel Sherman of the New York Post that he's not going to be Steinbrenner, that he's going to be patient, that he's going to trust his people. We'll see how long that lasts. Certainly, this team has played – And I wrote this after the Atlanta series, when they got hammered down in Atlanta. They are playing like a team that is going to cost people jobs. And ultimately, they might cost people jobs. But when it comes to firing a general manager right before the draft, right before the trade deadline, not such a smart thing to do. And when it comes to firing a manager, that's all well and good. But you've got to have a replacement lined up. And there really is no one on that staff that... I would think could take over right away and get something out of this team that Buck Walter isn't. Now, I said that last year about Girardi, and look at Rob Thompson. He did an amazing job getting more out of the Phillies than Girardi was getting out of that team. But I'm not so sure there is anyone on the Mets staff. Joey Cora, good candidate. Eric Chavez, a future candidate. Glenn Sherlock's been around forever. But I'm not sure you fire Buck for any of those guys. Let's move to Otani. So again, last night, ridiculous. And I think you're trying to change the national or international narrative of forget trade. We we were even getting rid of that if they were kind of close to contention. They are definitely in contention for a playoff spot. And it looks like that's not going to change by the time the trade deadline passes. So what's next? Are you trying to think about how this team could look 
as a contender and coming off what a week where they made two deals to boost their infield after suffering injuries that look good and bring more veterans and good dudes, Eduardo Escobar and Mike Moustakis to the ball club. Scott, it's interesting. We've been talking forever about the possibility of a trade of Otani, but with a team at this time of year, especially, and also around the winter meetings and that kind of thing, but especially now, because you can see more happening in front of you, you have to follow what a team is doing to understand their actions. And what I mean by that is, Go look at the Angels going back to last offseason. What did they do? They signed Tyler Anderson, brought in Hunter Renfro, Brandon Jury, Gio Urshela, Matt Moore, Carlos Estevez. Big year in terms of acquiring guys. What did they do this season? They promoted from the 2022 draft, Zach Neto and Ben Joyce, and they promoted their first round pick from the 2021 draft as well. They are acting, and these two trades last weekend reflected that, like a team that feels in an urgent position. That's who they are right now. So do I expect them to continue acting that way? I absolutely do. Now, depends on what's available. Can they really improve their team? All of that, injuries, everything that's going on when the deadline approaches. But this team right now holds a wild card position. They're not giving up by trading Otani. They're trying to add to Otani. They've been trying to add to Otani since the offseason, and really, we all need to change our whole perspective on what they're doing. And when I wrote today in our Athletic Daily Newsletter, which is free, by the way, that if this team That's gets in, and I'm not sure they will get in, of course, but if they do get in, they're kind of interesting, kind of dangerous. They've got Otani. Reed Detmers has figured it out. Sandoval, I believe, will get it back. Pretty interesting starting three right there. You've got a bullpen that has performed fairly well. You've got the sixth best offense in terms of runs per game in the major leagues. They could be one of these teams that gets on a run if they get in. If they get in, who's who's the set? I mean, I know you said Detmers and they have Sandoval. Are they going Otani and then an opener? And Otani's only pitching on six days rest, so that really cuts down in the playoffs. So it almost is like they need a three-pitcher depth. Is Detmers enough, or is a Giolito a guy that's going to put him over? I would expect they would want another, of course. All teams Everybody are going knows. to be looking for that, but not going to be easy to find. Just what I'm saying there, Eric, is Otani Detmers or Otani Sandoval Detmers, that is a pretty good place to start. And granted, yes, in a playoff series, you'd need to space them out more because of the way Otani is used. I understand all that, but... I sort of like what they're doing. I've liked what they've been doing since the offseason. Just the aggressiveness that they've shown under Perry Manasian. And it seems to me that it wouldn't necessarily be the 2022 Phillies marching from the wild card all the way to the end, just about. But they could be an interesting team come October if they get in. Can't we leeway the last thing we were talking about to this team? Could, could Art Moreno say, okay. I'll take on some of Verlander's contract if you're willing to give him up or Scherzer's contract if Cohen comes out today and says we're looking to break some of it down but not completely tear it down because you can't tear their whole team down. That's a great question, Eric. And in those two trades over the weekend, they did not add payroll. As I said, the Mets picked up all of Escobar. Moustakas is already making the minimum salary. Or not making. He is getting the minimum salary from the team that has him because the Reds – are paying everything else after releasing him. So these two trades were easy, right? They just had to give up players. And maybe you give up a better young player when you're, of course, getting this money in return. And that could be the case again come the deadline. But if Moreno is willing to add payroll, then you give up less. So that's going to be an interesting thing to watch with the Angels for sure. 